Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Chilton. I'm the president of Namex and I'd like to take you on a tour of some mushroom farms today just so you get an idea of how mushrooms are grown. Uh, mushrooms are fungal organisms and they're consumed as healthy food, nutritional supplements and nutraceuticals and they have been around forever and we've been eating them as long as we've been out there foraging. They could be considered one of the original paleo foods. Uh, and they have been systematically cultivated for 800 years, starting in China back when they were learned how to grow shiitake mushrooms. Today, approximately two dozen mushrooms are cultivated for food in Asia, um, and they eat them daily. They're, they are in almost all dishes. Uh, and traditional Chinese medicine uses mushrooms as a medicinal herb, and this is something that's relatively new to us in the West, but they're a very common and potent medicinal herb. Mushrooms today are sold worldwide as nutritional supplements. And one of the reasons why mushrooms are, are healthy foods is they have a, a moderate amount of protein, 15 to 40%, some of the important amino acids. They're high in fiber, 7 to 25%. And part of this is due to the presence of chitin, and this lowers overall digestibility of mushrooms. Um, but primarily, they're, they're high in car carbohydrates. 35 to 80 percent, and and these these percentages are very wide simply because we're talking about every mushroom is different. So different mushrooms will have different amounts of proteins and carbohydrates and so on. So, but high in carbohydrates, um, those would be mannitol, mannitol trehalose, beta glucan, and different forms of hemicellulose. Uh, the beta glucan is a, very important. It makes up 50 percent of the cell walls in mushrooms. We'll talk a little bit more about beta-glucans later. Mushrooms are low in fat, 1-8%, to 70% of which is uh, polyunsaturated. So they, these are, are good fats. Linoleic acid is one of the common ones. They're low in calories. This is interesting because that's why traditional Western nutritionists have always considered mushrooms to be non-foods, just because they were very low cal. Uh, vitamins, so thymine, riboflavin, and niacin are vitamins where there are reasonable amounts, uh, and minerals will generally reflect what mushrooms are growing from, and we call that the substrate. However, there's there's, there's two uh, uh, minerals that are always quite high in mushrooms, and that would be potassium and phosphorus. Now, in terms of worldwide mushroom production, China produces more than 85% of the world's mushrooms, and mushrooms, generally speaking, grow on agricultural wastes. In China, they have a lot of agricultural waste because it's an agrarian society to a large degree, and also it has got many, many decentralized small growers. Um, the other thing about China is it's got very supportive agricultural research institutes, many of these institutes across many, mush, many mushroom scientists, highly organized and efficient workforce, and uh, there is ongoing scientific research in China. One of the one of the factors about this is that just recently they've brought a couple of new mushrooms into cultivation over there, which is always a special event. They now are able to cultivate Cordyceps militaris. One of the important things that we need to understand is just what the life cycle of these organisms is and uh, it all starts with spore germination because mushrooms uh, uh, have spores, not seeds. The spores germinate into what are called hyphae. These hyphae come together and form a network, and that network is called mycelium. When conditions are right, that network of mycelium, which is amassing nutrients, will form what is considered to be a hyphal knot and a primordium. And this is just the very, very initial stages of of a mushroom, but that primordium is very small. Uh, it becomes a pinhead, a button, and then it goes through the different stages to ultimately reach a mature fruit body, which we call a mushroom, and that, that mushroom will then produce spores and the cycle will be complete. So how are mushrooms cultivated? Um, again, they've been cultivated systematically for 800 years. Uh, cultivation, you really are trying to mimic natural growing conditions. So you're observing what they grow on, what time of year they grow on, so you can get the right temperature parameters correct. And um, 
in this case, wood decomposers are grown on wood logs or sawdust, whereas pasture or grass decomposing mushrooms are grown on composted or whole cereal straws. Now for seed, which is of course the most important thing to grow mushrooms, spores or pieces of tissue are utilized to make what we call mushroom spawn. So what do we use as seed to grow mushrooms? What exactly and how does this work? Well, mushroom growing seed is a live culture of pure mycelium. So the live mycelium is what we are culturing and ultimately that is what we use to start the whole mushroom growing process. And live mycelium comes from the germination of spores. It also comes from the tissue of a fresh mushroom. So you can actually take a piece of fresh tissue, put it in a petri plate, grow it out, and you'll have an exact clone of that mushroom. So a live mycelium culture is grown on uh, various carrier materials. In this case, uh, those carrier materials are commonly grain, sawdust, or in some cases, wooden dowels. So the fully mycelium colonized sterile carrier, carrier material is called mushroom spawn. So a single mushroom, there's billions of spores dropped from a single mushroom. I mean, it is amazing, but there are billions of spores. So what one would do is collect clean spores from a mature mushroom, germinate the spores in a sterile petri plate, select specific growth sectors for further testing, and ultimately that allows one to develop a new culture. And at that point, a new, what we would call cultivar is born. So you're trying to develop a culture that would, would produce a reasonably high uh, um, yield of mushrooms and do it in a way where they are similar to what you see growing in nature. Now, the other way we can do that is we can take a, a single piece of clean mushroom tissue and uh, we would start by collecting a mature mushroom. We would open it up in a clean area, a sterile area for the most part, and select a clean piece and place that into a Petri plate. Then we would watch it grow um, over the Petri plate to as, see if the, the growth looks normal. And in that way, we can develop a new culture and again, a new cultivar and in this case that will be a clone of the mushroom that we have taken the piece of, of uh, tissue from. These next slides give you a very good idea of what pure mycelium in sterile culture looks like and mycelium normally grows out radial, radially from a central point. So when we want to produce spawn, and in this case grain spawn, first thing we'll do is soak the grain with water, sterilize it, inoculate it with a live mycelium culture like we just saw, review it for proper growth characteristics, and incubate it until the grain is fully colonized. Grain spawn provides thousands of inoculation points, each single grain, in a mushroom growing substrate. So this shows the grain in the plastic bags going into an autoclave to be sterilized. Here it's being inoculated. And here we can see this same grain being uh, checked for its growth characteristics. And here is the final package of grain spawn um, ready to go out to the grower. Grain spawn is normally used with agaricus culture. Here shows uh, the uh, composting process, and you can look in the background and see the, the light-colored straw and then the darker straw as it is being um, consumed by the microorganisms. Here's an agaricus farm, and that grain spawn has been mixed into the compost. Uh, it grows out in the compost. Um, there is a layer of peat moss put on the compost and then the mushrooms begin to form in that peat moss. This shows you when you when you pull up the mushrooms from those beds 
you can see the mycelium that has grown from the substrate into the peat moss and are uh, producing the mushrooms. The other type of spawn we have that is uh, very common is wooden dowel spawn, and this spawn is used primarily for growing shiitake. Uh, first thing is to soak and sterilize the wooden dowels, inoculate it with a live mycelium culture, review it for proper growth characteristics, and incubate the dowels until they are fully colonized and ready for use. This is a shiitake log operation. Somebody is drilling the holes in a set and very regular pattern on the log. Other people are then taking one of those dowels and hammering it into those holes. Once that is complete, they'll be put into a greenhouse for incubation. And then after about approximately 12 to 18 months, the shiitake mushrooms will start to grow off those logs. Other mushrooms that are grown in log cultivation are, are reishi. Reishi uh, in China is grown primarily in shade houses. Uh, in this case here, you can see there are very neat uh, rows of reishi. And the reason is that, again, we have a single piece of wood, a wood log underneath, and each one of those wood logs is growing a mushroom. Here's another reishi house in China, very simple house made of shade cloth. And in this case, the reishi is growing off a much larger log. The previous one would be a log that would produce one mushroom once and then be uh, recycled, whereas this log here will actually produce for two seasons. So it will produce one mushroom this year and one mushroom next year. These are also examples of the wood log that has been covered with soil and a reishi mushroom growing out of each one. Here again is the wood log with the reishi mushroom growing off of it. As, as mushroom cultivation progresses in China, one of the things that happens is the farms keep getting higher and higher quality, uh, especially as producers get larger. This shows you one of the newer generation of mushroom houses, and this shows the inside of the house we've got metal uprights now, standard greenhouse type technologies with the shade cloth, and again we have individual wood logs that have been covered with soil. Another type of spawn is sawdust spawn, and sawdust spawn is, is very common and used for inoculating sawdust logs that will grow many different mushrooms. With sawdust spawn you mix nutrient with sawdust, mostly rice bran, you add water, you sterilize, you inoculate with a live mycelium culture and then again reviewing for proper growth characteristics and you will incubate until the sawdust is fully colonized. This shows you just a small operation of filling these plastic bags with the sawdust and getting ready for sterilization. Here's the uh, autoclave that will sterilize these and here is uh, the room that is uh, full of completely colonized sawdust spawn ready to go to the grower. This same type of sawdust mixing will also produce the sawdust log substrate that is used to actually grow the mushrooms. So again, mix the nutrient with the sawdust, add water, uh, fill the bag and sterilize, inoculate the bag with a live mycelium culture, and then incubate until the sawdust is fully colonized. This is a again a small operation that is filling production bags of sawdust. These bags will then be moved into a sterilizer. After the sterilizer, uh, the bags and the sawdust are sterilized. They will be spawned. Here you can see three different places where sawdust spawn has been pushed into these bags. That's where they will inoculate these. In this case, again, very um, a lot of manual labor. In this case, they are taking the spawned logs down to the growing house, again, just shade cloth with shelves, and placing them all on the shelves. You can see the spawn that is beginning to grow out in these. The spawn will grow out here for another couple of months, and at that point, 
they'll start to crop the mushrooms. This is pretty much the same type of operation in terms of filling bags full of sawdust medium for production. Here again, it's a little more mechanized. You'll get a lot greater throughput put here. And this again is just the progression of how things work in China and how every type of operation gets slowly upgraded and more mechanized. When a mushroom substrate has been spawned, what we would normally say is the next stage is spawn running. In this case, you can see the spawn is beginning to grow out on this particular log, and these logs have all been inoculated with the spawn in four different locations. The um, configuration that they're stacked in is uh, kind of a unique one, but a lot of, a lot of the farms will uh, stack the logs in different ways. In this case, the spawn running is going on with logs stacked like cordwood. And in this house, the logs are all put right onto the shelves, which is where they'll grow the mushrooms. And the, the spawn run is uh, taking place in the house on the, on the shelves. Here's another way that they can stack these logs. And in this case, the logs are completely colonized and getting pretty close to where they'll put them into the grow room to grow the mushrooms. Here's a simple shade cloth greenhouse. And at this stage, they are removing the plastic bags from these sawdust logs and standing them up vertically, which is one of the methods that they use when they're not using shelves. They'll just stand them up vertically in this type of configuration. The mushrooms are now beginning to emerge and you can see that the overall quality is, is good and every log seems to be producing some mushrooms. This is a larger shiitake farm and you can see first of all there's the shade cloth up over all the houses and then each particular smaller unit has a plastic roof over it and can actually be completely shrouded in plastic which is helpful for controlling humidity at certain times. You can go in there, you can water a lot, you can keep the humidity high. That's really important. And in these bigger houses, being able to actually control the humidity is uh, critical to good mushroom formation. Here you can see the, the shiitake mushrooms are, are coming on strong. They're, they're ready to harvest at this point in time. It's a very, very solid, high quality looking flush of mushrooms. And here is a happy harvester who is uh, um, taking, pulling the mushrooms right off of the, the logs going down each row, taking the ones that are mature and ready to go, leaving the ones that aren't. And those mushrooms are all going to go into these plastic totes for uh, taking away and then ultimately putting into either a dryer or into a cooler for the fresh market. Be sure to take note here that when mushrooms are harvested, you try to take as little substrate as possible. So in, in this case, you can see the shiitake mushrooms have just a tiny bit on them, and that ultimately will get trimmed before they go into the dryer. So there's never any substrate that actually goes along with the mushroom once you harvested it. Here's a very, very large shiitake operation Again, they've got all of these uh, sawdust logs on the floor. In this case, they will simply open the top of these particular uh, sawdust logs and just grow the mushrooms straight out of the top. And that's the, that seems to be the method that works for them in this case. This is a greenhouse growing maitake. And again, they're using a sawdust log to grow them on. Here is an example of uh, a maitake as it first um, forms. And then as you move to the right in these photos, you can see the different stages of it as it matures. One thing to always remember is that it's light is very important for the pigment in mushrooms. So without light, you will really not get the true color of a mushroom. Here are 
the maitake mushrooms really ready to be harvested right now each mushroom is growing from two different sawdust logs that have been squeezed together so that one each mushroom gets the value the additional value of both of the logs here is some outdoor cultivation again a sawdust log in this case it is auricularia and uh, it's all put in very even rows and the key here is uh, utilization of space as well as the ability to harvest beautiful flush of auricularia mushrooms in this case they've actually left the plastic bag on which sometimes they'll they will do and what they'll do is they'll put a lot of small holes in the bag and then the auricularity mushrooms will grow out of those holes. Here's a good example of uh, mushrooms that are mature, ready to be harvested, and he will just pull them off the bag and put them into the, the uh, plastic tote that he's got there and he's picking into. Here is a Tremella house. This, uh, this slide actually I, was taken in 1994. So you can see this sawdust log method has been around for a long time. Put the logs on shelves, have uh, specific, in this case, specific spots where the mushroom is going to grow through. This is a very effective manner of growing mushrooms. And you can see by the, the yield that uh, it's a very effective method. Here's another um, more recent uh, photo of a Tremella farm, and but again, it is uh, the same basic method. In this case, he's only got three growing from that log, so um, that is a, a change that he's made in his method. And here's another mushroom. In this case, it is uh, Hericium, the lion's mane, growing off sawdust logs. In this case it looks like they've got three mushrooms, so there's probably three different spots where they've put holes or where they've spawned and that's where the mushrooms are growing. And once the mushrooms are harvested, they're dried in different ways. Uh, there's still a lot of sun drying all over China and uh, of course that's an effective and cost very cost effective method of drying your mushrooms so when you're traveling around certain parts of China during the harvest season you'll see a lot of mushrooms that are outside being sun dried as farms get bigger and uh, want to dry things a little faster they will put in actual uh, forced air dryers you can see in this case the, the mushrooms have been harvested at a more uh, immature stage so the cap is turned down these are higher quality mushrooms probably meant for the export market and here's the natural progression of drying methods where now you have actual stainless steel carts and stainless steel trays and the mushrooms will be dried using a little bit higher level of technology And finally, I want to show you the, the, uh, another method of, of making spawn, and this is liquid spawn. And in this method, uh, you would sterilize uh, nutrient-filled water. Uh, you would inoculate that with a live mycelium culture. You would incubate the mycelium inside this vessel. It would be aerated and stirred and at the end you would review it for proper growth characteristics and to make sure there's no contamination. This particular mushroom growing facility is probably one of the most modern in the world. Here it is, it's a very very large operation. You can see here the, the sawdust at the end, all the nutrients over to the left, and this is what's called a bottle uh, culture type of operation where they're filling these particular bottles and it is completely mechanized from start to finish so these bottles are traveling through a machine they're being filled with the sawdust substrate there's a hole punched down the center of each one of those the lid is put on on the other side after they've been filled with the substrate 
and now those substrate filled jars are all put into these autoclaves for sterilization. After they come out of the sterilizer, they go into this clean room and you can see now the, the spawn, uh, liquid spawn um, container and it is hooked up to the machine here and as these uh, jars go through this machine here, they will be injected with the liquid spawn right down that hole in the center of these jars. After that, they're going to move, be moved into a large room like this where they will incubate. Now you can see that the sawdust is completely run through with the mycelium. At a certain point, the cap will come off. They will start to They'll lower the temperature, they'll start to form some uh, young pins, and in this case now we've got some buttons. And then the mushrooms will grow up out of the top of these jars. It's a really um, high quality facility here. Um, the coverage in these jars is, is excellent. There's mushrooms growing out of every one. And, and the final yield will look something like this. This is Pleurotus oringii. This same method is producing uh, other, uh, these, these are, are mushrooms that are utilized for food, uh, but again it's the method, you look at the coverage, there's complete coverage in uh, every single jar, it's a very very effective way to grow mushrooms, and there's very little uh, labor involved in this, which is part of the mechanization procedure here. When they are ready to harvest these mushrooms, what they do is they actually go in with conveyors and they will have somebody putting each one of those containers full of jars onto uh, these uh, conveyors and they are conveyed to a uh, room where we have people that are actually harvesting the mushrooms and as they harvest, they are also going to be packing these for shipping out to the stores and what they're doing here essentially is they're pulling it off the top of the jar then they will slice off the bottom which has substrate attached so they'll slice that off and then they will ultimately weigh them out as they put them into different smaller containers over wrap them put them in boxes and they're ready to ship out that is uh, as modern as any mushroom farm in the world. Now for a brief review, mushroom cultivation begins with a pure culture of mycelium and we can establish that pure culture either through the use of mushroom spores or the use of mushroom tissue. Once we have a pure culture of mycelium we have to put it on some material to create what we call mushroom spawn and that material can be wooden dowels, it can be grain, sawdust, or even liquid. Once we have the spawn, we're going to mix that spawn into a substrate, and that substrate is made up of very various materials, uh, wood logs, compost, or sawdust logs, but we're going to mix the spawn into those substrate materials, and the mycelium will then run out and completely colonize it. Once those substrates are colonized and once that mycelium is mature, we can at that point begin to produce mushrooms. Namex produces mushrooms naturally, uh, the way nature intended. Our mushrooms are produced on natural substrates and these natural substrates have the precursors in them that help the mushrooms produce the medicinal compounds. Mushrooms are not harvested with their substrates, so you don't get uh, any uh, sawdust or any of this in, in our mushroom products. I mean, it's 100% mushroom tissue. Mushrooms have no starch, so we can ensure to you that this is simply a pure mushroom extract and nothing more. Mushrooms are high in beta-glucans and ergosterol. This is because what we are growing is 100% fungal matter, so you get the absolute peak of these active compounds in the mushrooms that we're growing and the extracts that we're producing. Mushrooms are high in secondary metabolites. 
It's the mushroom that produces the secondary metabolites. Look at the racy triterpenes or the chaga triterpenes. These are there in the mushroom because the precursors are in the substrate. If your mushrooms or your mushroom product is being grown on something other than a natural substrate, you are not going to have these secondary metabolites in that product. And mushrooms are the true full spectrum product. This is, means that all the important compounds are there in their natural profile and this is really important because a lot of companies say they've got full spectrum products when in fact they do not in any way have a full spectrum product. Thank you very much for viewing this slideshow. I hope you have a better understanding of exactly how mushrooms are grown. If you'd like more information about the quality control issues of mushroom products in the marketplace, please take a look at my paper, Redefining Medicinal Mushrooms. We, we tested 95 different samples of all different types of mushroom products. I think you'll find it very interesting. You can find Redefining Medicinal Mushrooms here on the website.